Hi guys. So in this video, let's talk about some vasculitis syndromes. So we'll be talking about Chirkstra syndrome, Wegener's granulomatosis, polyarthritis nodosa and giant cell arthritis in this video. We'll also be talking about polymyalgia rheumatica and polymyositis just for the completion's sake. So let's start about uh, first about Chirkstra syndrome. So uh, just think of Strauss as a person. His name is Strauss, all right, and he is having some Pepsi using some straws as you can see in this image uh, this is a, a tin or a can with some straws all right so this is a straw so sorry about the image anyway so uh, this guy straws is having some pepsi using these straws and uh, as soon as he had this pepsi he has uh, got these asthma symptoms the allergy symptoms because he's probably allergic to pepsi and uh, that leads to eosinophilia and increased ige so uh, as you know eosinophilia is nothing but increased eosinophils in your blood all right and uh, high ige and eosinophilia these occur whenever there are any allergic symptoms right so uh, these two we can uh, associate with allergy and asthma we have proper asthma symptoms nasal polyps and uh, this uh, p pepsi you can remember for p anka right uh, so uh, chirkstra syndrome you can remember the symptoms with asthma, nasal polyps, purpura and glomerulonephritis are almost common in all the vasculitis syndromes uh, because uh, vasculitis, your blood vessels are affected, your blood vessels are inflamed which eventually leads to issues in your skin and your kidney. So your glomerulonephritis will lead to hematuria eventually. Alright, so uh, Chirkstraws had, the Strauss guy had Pepsi, so P for Pepsi. So when you are doing investigations, the first thing and the most specific thing uh, not the first thing, but the most specific thing will be your P anka. All right, that is the confirmatory test. And then uh, you'll do eosinophil. You'll get eosinophilia, high IgE. And when you do biopsy, you'll know that it is a vasculitis syndrome with eosinophils because you are having eosinophilia, right? And uh, that's why this is also called eosinophilic granulomatosis with polyangitis. So granulomatosis. Uh, is uh, nothing but necrotizing granulomas which will be seen in this vasculitis syndrome uh, and that will be eosinophilic that will be uh, you know when you uh, do the biopsy along with the granulomas you'll see eosinophils there all right and uh, the treatment for almost all the vasculitis is steroids followed by cyclophosphamide so you can just uh, you just have to remember steroids because uh, there is vascular inflammation going on so you'll have to give him give him some steroids to treat it all right so this is Turkstra syndrome for, for Wegener's granulomatosis, this is also a necrotizing granulom, uh, granulomatosis disease without eosinophils. So, there are no eosinophils here. As you can see, uh, Chirkstraws is called uh, eosinophilic, but this is not called eosinophilic because this is not an allergy associated vasculitis. All right. So, uh, in this, you can remember, just remember Wegener's, just replace the just replace the G with C here, all right, Wegner's. So, uh, this, with this C, we can remember a few things. So, first of all, the main thing that we have to remember is C anka. C anka, which is the, again, uh, the, you know, very specific, the most, one of the most specific tests for Wegener's granulomatosis. And after that, uh, you can remember C for crusting. So, you will have nasal crusting. So, you can see in this image, uh, there is some, you know, nasal crusting here. So, uh, so this will uh, nasal crusting and other nose symptoms also like saddle shaped nose again. Uh, so this saddle shaped nose and crusting are seen in Wigner's granulomatosis. So C for crusting and uh, you will also have chronic sinusitis. You can rem either remember chronic sinusitis or sinusitis in general because S is very similar to C. All right, And then again you will have nasal symptoms like epistaxis. Uh, these are upper URT symptoms because these are affecting your nose uh, your lungs also will be affected so when your lungs are affected that will uh, th since there is a granuloma that will lead to hemoptysis uh, and then uh, you'll have dyspnea and your kidneys like I said previously your kidneys are almost always affected when there is vasculitis that will lead to glomerulonephritis which will present as hematuria. Uh, so, when you do investigations, you will see C anka for sure. RBC casts in urine will be seen. Again, this you can remember with the C, casts, uh, C for casts 
and when you do biopsy you will get poly uh, you will get uh, gran necrotizing granulomatous granulomas you will be able to see in the biopsy but there won't be any eosinophils all right the next comes polyarteritis nodosa nodosa so uh, as you can see uh, with poly you can know that the, uh, almost all your organs are being affected you know multiple organs in your system in your body are affected uh, but remember p a n your pulmonary arteries are not involved so uh, vasculitis is nothing but your vessels uh, affected right so you can remember just uh, this with this p a n that pulmonary arteries are not involved not involved so your lungs are usually spared so this occurs this is a rare systemic vasculitis with again necrotizing inflammation of the medium sized arteries all right uh, and then uh, all organs uh, so medium sized are nothing but your uh, you know normal blood vessels which are which supply to your main organs organs um, uh, so all organs are affected except your lungs so uh, these will have very vague symptoms okay for polyarteritis nodosa it is a very uh, you know ve uh, the patient will have very vague symptoms so this is usually a diagnosis of exclusion so you just have to exclude the other options and then you can you know maybe confirm that this is probably the diagnosis so abdominal pain pancreatitis myalgia headache you know very all symptoms will be affected skin will also be affected and your uh, neuro also will be affected all right and you'll also have pancreas abdominal pain myalgia your um, severe you know muscle pains and all headaches you'll have arthralgia and weight loss and fever are normal sy systemic symptoms so this is and the next one we're going to talk about is giant cell arthritis which is a very important one and let's talk about giant cell arthritis so giant cell arthritis is also called temporal arthritis why because uh, your temporal artery is inflamed itis is inflammation so your temporal artery is inflamed so this is usually seen in an elderly female like you can see here in the image uh, and when your temporal uh, when the patient's temporal artery is affected all the areas that it that it supplies blood to is affected so uh, as you can see in this image her you know there will be some scalp tenderness whenever she's combing her hair her scalp will start paining uh, she'll have headache and this eventually supplies uh, eventually leads to ophthalmic artery uh, inflammation as well so when the uh, when her, the patient's ophthalmic artery is inflamed she will have transient visual field loss all right that is temporary visual field loss uh and uh, her jaw is also affected so there will be jaw claudication so the symptoms are very clear headache all the places where the temporal artery is uh, affecting just remember this image here a uh, headache scalp tenderness transient visual loss which is a very important feature age is usually greater than 50 because this is an elderly female jaw claudication and it is usually associated with polymyalgia rheumatica so we uh, will discuss about this later on but polymyalgia means poly poly is multiple muscles myalgia means muscle pain algia means pain poly is poly myalgia so multiple pain multiple muscles are painful all right and when you do the investigation the first thing that you have to do is esr so esr will be elevated will be very much elevated usually greater than 30 all right so the first thing that you do is esr and then you do a temporal artery biopsy all right this is the most confirmatory test and you'll see when you do the biopsy take a little bit of uh, the temporal artery and do a biopsy you'll see that there is vasculitis going on all right so whenever the patient comes with these symptoms especially if an if it is an elderly female coming in with these symptoms and especially uh, whether she has visual field loss or not whether the symptom is present or not just give the patient high dose prednisolone as soon as you see that her esr is elevated uh, you do nothing just give her high dose prednisolone uh, and you do not wait for biopsy or you do not waste time doing any further investigations just give a prednisolone so that the ophthalmic artery that was uh, that is you know inflamed in this patient won't cause permanent blind blindness all right just save her eye give her some prednisolone and uh, you'll also add on some aspirin along with prednisolone later on but the first thing that you need to do is prednisolone 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 nothing else just prednisolone for giant cell arthritis all right polymyalgia rheumatica let's continue speaking about that so in polymyalgia rheumatica i like i said poly your uh, multiple muscles are affected so these are usually proximal muscles all right because 
this uh, rheumatic i mean this uh, issue, this disorder affects your proximal muscle so as you can see in this image her proximal muscles are being affected uh, so as you know proximal is the you know front one the initial ones the, the these are proximal and these are distal so distal ones distal muscles are spared but proximal muscles are affected all right so um, you will have the patient will have the patient will have bilateral pain and morning stiffness of the shoulder neck and pelvic girdle so shoulder neck and pelvic girdle so these are the three most important proximal muscles you have to remember or you have to even know that is uh, basic all right uh, so the patient will have difficulty in getting out of bed because uh, to get out of bed or raise the arm or brush the air she'll have to use her proximal muscles right to get out of the bed she has to use her pelvic girdle muscles to brush uh, the hair she has to use the uh, shoulder and neck muscles or raise the arm right so this is always almost uh, usually uh, associated with giant cell arthritis and similar to giant cell arthritis it is usually seen in an elderly female patient so here also again you'll have high esr so the first test you do is esr which will be elevated so here you don't have to do any temporal artery biopsy because she doesn't have any temporal artery symptoms that is uh, your scalp tenderness jaw claudication visual issues all that are not not there so you just have to do uh, esr and if it is elevated you'll give them you'll give the patient st steroids because you don't want polymyalgia rheumatica to eventually lead to giant cell arthritis which will cause visual field loss right so that's why you just give them steroids all right so a comparison with uh, this and this uh, let's discuss polymyositis is also very similar to uh, polymyalgia rheumatica as in poly again uh, uh, multiple muscles are uh, inflamed right it is is inflamed so uh, but the uh, and here also it is again the same proximal muscles are affected as you can see in this image is uh, neck shoulder uh, you know proximal arm and proximal leg are affected and your pelvic girdle are affected so that's why this is also usually proximal right uh, so here uh, the problem is there is polymyositis in uh, my, my, myositis so here the patient will have increased weakness rather than pain okay so here uh, uh, there is inflammation but there is no algia like in the previous disorder in the uh, polymyalgia myalgia rheumatica so uh, as in the name as the name says it is algia algia always means pain right uh, so uh, algia is pain so here we'll have increased pain but then uh, in the poly in polymyositis it is uh, it is just polymyositis it is inflammation but there is no mention of algia in the name so you just uh, have to know that this is not not associated with pain it is usually weakness mostly weakness in your proximal muscles all right so here also the patient will have difficulty rising uh, same things as before and then uh, the uh, the you uh, when you do the investigations the main thing that will be elevated is your creatinine kinase so uh, that occurs because your muscles are inflamed here so when your muscles are inflamed it will automatically lead to increased creatinine kinase kinase so that is the main thing here and uh, polymyositis you can remember it as uh, anti jo po jo or you can also think of it as pooja uh, if the name is familiar to you you can think it as think of it as pooja all right and when you do ldh and aldolase these are again in, uh, high because uh, it is uh, it is affecting a muscle and uh, you do an electromyography to know what is occurring what is happening with your muscles and the definitive test will be again muscle biopsy all right uh, so again here also the treatment will be steroids uh, so the main thing here we have to know is differential diagnosis uh, between myositis that is polymyositis where po and jo are seen and polymyalgia rheumatica which is associated with giant cell arthritis so uh, in myositis we will have weakness more than pain all right and polymyalgia as the name says it is more pain all right and here because polymyositis your muscles are inflamed ck will be elevated creatinine kinase will be elevated and in polymyalgia your muscles are affected but they are not inflamed right so the uh, ck will be normal in myositis uh, your ck will uh, your esr will be mildly elevated they, that will be elevated but not much but if you see uh, polymyalgia rheumatica your esr will be very much elevated all right at least greater than 30 so you just have to remember it as with this table with this small table here uh, 
weakness is more with myositis pain is more with polymyalgia ck is elevated ck is normal esr is elevated slightly but in this esr is very much elevated all right so this is it about uh, the different vasculitis syndromes and a few uh, uh, two 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 other muscle symptoms that are you know associated with these thank you